Let's dive right into the agenda. First item is introduction to public works and proposed ordinance changes. Uh, Mr. McDermott. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Josh McDermott, Director of Public Works. I have with me today uh, Erica Lighting. She's our office administrator in the back. Amy Marks. She's our Public Works Superintendent. And Matt Hajazi, our Industrial Engineer. Um, I want to thank Matt for putting this presentation together. And also Leon Pinder in the back. He's our, many you may know him already, he's our Sanitation Superintendent. So we'll go over a quick overview of our department. And then we'll discuss some proposed changes to our city waste, uh, city ordinance, um, chapter 74, solid waste. So public works consists of three divisions. We have sanitation, and they have residential, commercial, bulk and yard, and we also have solid waste code enforcement in, them, in our uh, sanitation division as well. Uh, street maintenance consists of asphalt. We have an asphalt team, a concrete team, uh, street lighting team, and also traffic operations. And I'll go into more detail on those two divisions in a minute. Administration consists of administrative support. We have an industrial engineer in our uh, administrative division as well. Fleet coordination, we have our own customer service and our own dispatch as well. So this is sanitation overview. This is a picture of one of our residential vehicles tipping a garbage can. So we have a total staff of 18 employees in sanitation. That includes one supervisor with just over or close to 24,000 customers in residential. In commercial, here's a picture of our, one of our commercial vehicles tipping a dumpster. We have a total staff of 19. That includes two supervisors with approximately 2,400 customers. And this is our Balkan yard. This is one of our grapple trucks, and we service. We have a total staff of 11 employees, including one supervisor, and we service approximately 115,000 customers. And here's a picture of uh, illegal dumping. We have our own sanitation code enforcement. We have a total of three staff. That's one supervisor and two code enforcement officers. The supervisor and one of the code enforcement officers are funded by the CRA, and they're responsible for all of the city. They also, uh, the two that are funded by CRA, they mostly concentrate on the CRA areas. However, the third code enforcement officer, he's, he uh, does citywide as well. Street maintenance overview. This is one of our uh, asphalt team members fixing a pothole. So we have a total staff of six employees. We're responsible for over 510 lane miles. So in addition to fixing potholes, we also do uh, small asphalt restorations and uh, repairs as well. And this is our concrete team. There's six employees on our concrete team including a supervisor. They maintain sidewalks and paver bricks. They work together with the asphalt team on doing some of the pavers. Uh, here they're restoring or replacing a traffic control device on one of our city streets. And we have street lighting. Street lighting consists of three employees. That's one supervisor and two street lighting technicians. We, uh, we're, op we're responsible for the operation and maintenance of close to 12,000 street lights citywide. That includes some FDOT and county street lights, depending on if we have a maintenance agreement with them or not. And we also do striping. Let me back up a second. We also do striping and sign maintenance. We have a uh, printer in our sign shop. Um, it's a total staff of five employees, including a supervisor. We maintain just over 19,000 street signs citywide. 
And we also do support for uh, special events. Here, here we're doing an elevator wrap, so we, we fabricate those in-house and wrap them in-house, so we support uh, a lot of the special events in that manner. We also do, uh, for our traffic division and streets division, we, we do a lot of the uh, MOTs or the tra temporary traffic control for some of the special events, and we also support public utilities. Another key function of public works is debris management post hurricane and storm events. Our operation team coordinates with parks and rec to clear the debris for emergency and utility personnel. And we're also responsible for the debris removal. While our administrative team is responsible for tracking the expenses, maintaining the documentation, uh, financial and bookkeeping keeping activities, we also coordinate with the communications team to create and update press releases. So we actually, uh, we're, we're meeting in a few weeks to begin planning and preparations for the hurricane season, which is right around the corner. So we're gonna talk about the court current ordinance issues and I'm gonna pass it off to Matt Hajazi for this section. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Matt Hajazi, Public Works Industrial Engineer. Uh, just a, a quick overview of the current issues that we identified with the city ordinance. And um, these five items on the list uh, captures the current issues. First one being um, a special collection pickup fee. Next, commercial customers uh, affected by that uh, change. And also block goods and has waste uh, along with landscape contractor waste. Next, I'm gonna get into more detail uh, covering each of those items. Uh, thanks. Uh, regarding um, the special collection pickup fee, uh, the current language uh, does not provide the breakdown uh, related to the cost of service. And uh, as a result of that, customers may uh, underestimate the fee associated with the service. Uh, that uh, basically uh, lack of uh, uh, detail in the current language uh, could lead to uh, that misunderstanding for the overall cost. Next is commercial customers. Um, basically, as you can see, the first portion uh, covers the maximum size uh, dumpster serviced by the city. Uh, currently, uh, in, in the city ordinance, does not cover that maximum size that we could cover, um, which could lead to potential uh, revenue that we could be collecting. Next is um, minimum container requirement, which is a 96 gallon city issue that doesn't really, uh, uh, is not really covered in the ordinance. And as a result of that, um, just the uh, potential issue that we see is uh, the, the image on the bottom of that slide covers a variety of different cans that uh, we could see, and some may not be compatible with our trucks. Next, uh, regarding bulk goods, uh, the current language uh, is not clear uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, the maximum number of uh, bulk goods that they could have, uh, and uh, the current language uh, basically has a, a, a volume mentioned for the bulk goods, which is typically bulk and yard are quantified with the maximum quantity, not the volume, because the volume basically is for the vegetation. Next is the hazardous waste. Um, uh, proper disposal uh, in the current language is not provided for the residents. And uh, uh, obviously, the potential risk of contamination as a result of those uh, uh, improper way of uh, disposing of those is the result of uh, uh, this potential issue. And the last problem is uh, related to the landscape contractor waste. Um, as you could see in those images, um, this basically, uh, or actual images captured by our code enforcement officers and landscapers, um, uh, remove all waste from the premise that they do the work 
is not currently uh, specified in a way that the proper way of disposing it, and uh, it could result in residents uh, getting cit citation for the landscape waste that's left by the curbside or right away, because clearly um, this is an area that uh, we found uh, room for improvement. Mm -hmm. And um, through these five changes. I just wanted to add, if you want to follow along, we do have this handout that we gave you all. So it's, um, it shows each issue, the current language and the proposed language. So the, the proposed language is in red and underlined. And this is going through the ACM process, so it'll be on the agenda for next Monday. Correct. Thank you. So next, um, I'm going to cover the proposed changes for these five issues that I just covered. Regarding the special uh, collection pickup fee, um, provide a breakdown of the total fee to cover the fixed fee and the variable fee, which is the trip fee and the landfill fee. Um, and this will give the residents a clear idea how this overall uh, cost for the service is calculated. Um, regarding the cost commercial customers, the revised maximum dumpster size uh, for which we provide the service uh, changed from eight to 10 cubic yard. That could potentially give us the revenue that uh, we could collect for providing that service. And also regarding the uh, 96 gallon can uh, to be issued by the city to ensure that we have consistency and uh, most importantly uh, compatibility with our trucks, with the side loader trucks. Next, regarding the bulk goods, um, the, we're revising the current language to define a specific quantity of bulk goods. As I mentioned, bulk goods has nothing to do with the volume. Next is the hazardous waste. Um, we added a section regarding the hazardous waste disposal and remind the residents of local and state law requirements. And the last one regarding the landscape contractor waste uh, uh, through the proposed change, we clarify the landscape contractor shall, not, shall remove the waste by hauling to approved facility rather than leaving it on the right of way or curbside after finishing the work. So with that being said, um, if you have any questions, that Thank wraps you. up the changes. Um, let me make an observation while we have the opportunity. Um, when COVID hit, uh, one of the things that, that I have bragged about uh, is how departments pulled together to continue to provide services to our residents. Your department is one that can't really do remote working, right? You can't fix a pothole remotely. You can't pick up garbage remotely. Mm -hmm. So let me just thank you publicly uh, for all that you've done, your team has done to continue to provide our citizens with the service that they have grown accustomed to, even in the midst of a pandemic. Uh, and again, you didn't have the opportunity of sending 40, 50 percent of your staff to do this work from home. Uh, you all remain on the front line. Uh, you continue to provide the services that the, and, and our citizens continue to receive the benefit of all your services. So let me just publicly thank you, uh, Josh and your team, uh, for, for you all doing what you had to do. Uh, to provide the level of service to our community to which they have grown accustomed. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. Um, couple of questions. So when you talk about the fees uh, and you're trying to make it clear, uh, particularly in the definitions, is there a fee schedule somewhere that the public can uh, look at? Is it on a website or something so they could uh, not yes. only see the actual fee and not just a category? There's a fee schedule that's posted on our website. Okay. No fees are changing. We're just making it more clear to the resident what they pay for. So we're not changing any fees at all. Okay, very good. Um, commissioners, questions? Yeah, Madam President. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you very much for the presentation. Um, really, I just have a comment, and I wanted to say thank you, uh, Josh, to your team, um, Mitch Posner and his team, and Jose Tegel, 
for engaging residents and some changes that would directly affect them. So I really appreciate the neighborhood engagement. I know we have another one to do, but I was completely appreciative. I know the neighbors understood um, kind of the changes and how they would affect them and what could have been a, a very big misconception turned into a very positive situation. So just wanted to say thank you very much to your team for reaching out and doing that. And thank you for your support with that. We appreciate that. Uh, other questions? Yeah, Commissioner Fox. Thank you. Thank you so much for the, this presentation. I had a question um, regarding illegal dumping, and I don't know if that falls under the, the category of bulk goods, but uh, last week I was taking a walk with Rafael Clemente from the DDA through the downtown, and we were just looking at some of the areas that were having, especially having issues um, with trash and things like that. And we walked through the alleys um, behind some of the restaurants, and he said that it, it was, a, in particular, an issue that many, um, with the dumpsters in the back, that there were a lot of people were Ill doing illegal dumping there, uh, and that there was some remedy that you had in mind about maybe putting codes or something on those garbage cans in the back so that only the people that actually were you know, in that restaurant that needed those could be using, utilizing those. And I just, I, I wasn't clear if that's exactly what it was, but if there's anything else that we can look at for solutions in other parts of the city, I know that many of us had a call from um, the owner of Roosters that um, it was, you know, a bar that had is had a fire last year. And so now they're not, you know, there all the time and they have had a lot of issues with illegal dumping while they're not open. And so I was just curious if there's anything else that we can look at for those situations. Like I see the bulk goods here and I trying to determine, you know, how do you know whether it's illegal dumping or somebody that lives there that's actually putting this out. So I just wonder if you could talk a little bit about that. Definitely. So let me address the uh, downtown area real quick. Uh, you may be referring to Rocco's Tacos. Right now there's, uh, there's four dumpsters down there. We're going to replace those with a compactor. We're actually working with uh, Sibile on that. We want to wrap them and make them look a little bit better because the alleyway just west of there has been uh, reconstructed and they want to activate the alley eventually. So we're looking at wrapping those three compactors in that area. There's two in the uh, 300 block and one that we're going to place in the 200 block. With these new compactors, we're able to provide each user or each customer with their own access code so nobody will be able to use that compactor except for the person who's actually paying for it. Uh, we think that will help with some of the illegal, dump illegal dumping. And right now, uh, the size of the dumpsters and the, the quantity that we have out there is just not enough. So I think with the compactor, that's going to help with some of it. We have one supervisor. Uh, as I mentioned, he's funded by the CRA. So he concentrates in the downtown area and then uh, Northwood. So. Um, Leon's listening will definitely make sure that he looks into some additional and uh, solutions. We, we meet monthly with the Clean Streets Task Force, so we'll certainly add that to the agenda. Um, as far as roosters go, I know Leon visited that area. Unfortunately, when you do illegal dumping, um, if it happens on your property, the property owner is responsible for that. That's, you know, that's what our, our ordinance states. Um, but we can work with the, the property owner. Um, you know, they don't always necessarily receive a citation right away. We do work with them. So I'm, uh, I'm not sure exactly what we did with Roosters. Uh, maybe Leon can touch on that, but I did. I saw the post on Engage, and, and uh, Armando and I talked about it a little bit. So we did go down there. So again, we have our own sanitation code enforcement. So all sanitation code enforcement um, concerns should, should come through us so we could address those. But we do work with the customers. Uh, we look at other options. You know, cameras were looking at deploying nine cameras citywide, not just in the CRA areas. Uh, so we're looking at that. We spoke recently to Raphael with the DDA um, about purchasing some additional cameras for the downtown areas. So we're looking at everything we can. We realize it's an issue and, and uh, we again, we meet monthly to discuss it with the Clean Street Task Force. Uh, Commissioner Lambert. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Josh, uh, to you and your team for the presentation and for the work that you continuously do. And I'm glad Commissioner Fox brought up um, roosters because that was one of my questions as well is, um, you know, just clearly we want to penalize the bad actors for the legal dumping and just wondering if there was anything that could be done as in 
for the business owners or the people who are victims of the illegal dumping. And, and now I have spoken with the owner there, and he is going to be putting up a fence to help deter that in the future. But, you know, um, I live in a neighborhood that's somewhat close to the railroad tracks. And for some reason, people feel like coming into neighborhoods that are close to the railroad tracks that that means that they can drop things off there illegally and you know a lot of times see mattresses and things like that we call the city and you're very responsive in picking them up thank you i was just curious if um i know that i saw the press release recently about the fines that um if we are able to catch people who are doing illegal dumping do we have any signage speaking to that in the areas we know that are repeat offense locations we don't have any signage that states that a reward could be offered if, if a conviction is made. Uh, that was something newer that we've done. It's been, it was implemented about nine months ago or so, but there, there is a reward if, if the person is caught uh, on video and convicted, there's a $100 reward possible. Um, so we don't have any signage that shows that, but we do have signage specifically for illegal dumping that we can put up in certain areas. We get it through the Solid Waste Authority, um, our sign shop actually, uh, through um, our sanitation division, our sign shop can put the signage up. So if, you, if, if there are some um, specific locations, we can put some signage up. I think that would be helpful and or door hangers on the homes that are near the areas where this happens often because it is primarily not the people who live in that area that this is happening to. Um, and also it's, it's our communities that maybe don't speak English as their primary language. So if we could have them translated in, into Spanish, that would be helpful as Definitely. well. well. We'll put that on our agenda for our Clean Street meeting. Uh, and we, we also do some outreach to the uh, public as well, and we have a, one of our code enforcement officers does speak Spanish, so we could look at doing some uh, more public outreach. Thank you. Mayor, Commissioner, I'm just going to address really quick the, the legal dumping issues. As, as Josh mentioned, we have the Operation Clean Streets team, and that, so that includes uh, law enforcement on there. Uh, we're going to have a, a, a discussion very soon about prosecuting some of these cases because it's one thing, it's one thing to try to enforce it, it's another thing, and then take that through the next step to prosecution, and a, a robust uh, public relations campaign on anti-littering. So we've really beefed up Operation Clean Streets over the last two months, right before the holidays. So you're going to see a lot of movement on there over the next few months, and we'll be updating you as we get, come up with some new uh, strategies and new initiatives under that. That's great. And, you know, I love to hear the public relations campaign because the other thing I was thinking is, you know, it's expensive if you have a lot of waste and you have to, you know, get rid of it in the proper manner. And so I hope in our public relations campaign, we're also utilizing the resources of our sustainability department because I think they partner with Resource Depot, with other organizations that allow people to recycle at no cost. Yes, yeah, sustainability is on it. And we actually have two citizens who, are, who have been heavily engaged in the past in, uh, in litter campaigns, anti-litter campaigns, who are part of this committee. And they presented to us and we had a really good discussion on that. So you'll be seeing a campaign very soon. Okay. And Mayor, I have another question. Yes. Thank you. I had a question, and, and first of all, I want to say thank you so much for putting the slide numbers on. It's actually regarding slide number 10. Um, and you mentioned the different sizes of the trash cans. I was just curious, what percentage, I don't know if you know exactly, but just generally, do we know of commercial or residential that are using the incorrect sizes, and how will this affect them? So the, the dumpster right now, the, the way the ordinance language reads, we prov I'm going to address the, the commercial one first, the dumpster. So right, right now it reads that we can provide up to eight cubic yards. Um, our trucks can service up to 10 cubic yards, so we're losing some business. We don't know how much business we're losing, but we, with the increase, with changing that discrepancy, we'll potentially get more revenue in. So I don't, I don't have the percentage. As far as the 96-gallon uh, container goes, right now, you can see in the illustration right here, there are several different types of cans that commercial establishments may be using. Uh, we, we don't have that percentage either. However, what we're going to do is, just like we're doing with Northwood, is we're going to issue the city, uh, or it'll be a city-issued 96-gallon container. So not only is it safer and more efficient for the customers, but it's also the same for our, for our employees that are tipping the can. And it'll be no cost to them to be no issued cost to a them city container. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Peduzzi. 
Thank you, Mayor. If I could briefly um, turn back to littering that we talked about just a couple minutes ago. Um, I had the opportunity this weekend, I was driving, uh, excuse me, riding my bikes, our bikes with my kids down um, North Lake Boulevard on the bike path from Ibis to uh, Beeline. And I guess you do notice a lot more when you're on a bike or walking, but I noticed there was a lot of litter on the fence line. I mean, it was just plastered, actually. I, I was shocked at how much was, was there. And the question I have is, do we have dedicated staff to um, you know, picking up litter uh, in the public works department? Or is that something that, that I should just, you know, with regard to that particular stretch, should I be organizing something with the community? That stretch, I'm almost positive, is maintained through a contract, and the contract is administered, or uh, we have Parks and Rec, Todd Snyder, he, I, I'm almost positive that he maintains the contract for that stretch of roadway. But I can check in with him just to make sure, but we do not have dedicated staff to go out and pick up litter. There are certain locations that are uh, maintained through a contract, and I'm almost positive that Todd Snyder does the one for that particular stretch. Yeah, uh, th that, that is right. And uh, I think we have an independent contractor also taking care of Okeechobee through Parks and Recs. Madam uh, City Administrator, can you have um, uh, Leah or whoever is in charge of that uh, talk with the commissioner? And, uh, you know, he can identify specifically where some of that is. Uh, since I was commissioner out in District 4, North, you know, garbage on North Lake was a continuous issue and continuous complaint. So if we aren't addressing that, we need to be. And, and as I said, I think we're paying a contractor to deal with that. So let's follow up, please. Follow up. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, one particular area of concern, because I was thinking I could organize something, but a lot of it was actually beyond the fence line. There was tires, coolers. I mean, there was just, I couldn't believe the amount of stuff, and you don't see it from the road. From the road, it actually looks clean, because there's kind of like a little ditch right at the fence line, and it's all accumulated in there, and a lot of it is actually in the water, actually inside grassy waters. It's, you know, gotten through the fence. So uh, I think it might be a little problematic even getting to some of it, but I'm sure there's, there's got to be a way, but there's some large things that have somehow made their way over that fence. So I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of that. Thank you. We could talk to public utilities about that inside the fence line. Uh, Madam President. Thank you, Mayor. And, you know, some of my colleagues bring up litter and illegal dumping, which are issues that affect the North End in particular. You know, we have some contracted areas, the Broadway corridor, that staff has been really, really helpful in getting some additional garbage cans. I know um, the public has reached out to see how they can inquire about getting garbage cans in other areas, the Palm Beach Lakes corridor, the 45th Street corridor, as well as increased um, regulation on illegal dumping. It affects the Pleasant City neighborhood, the Coleman Park neighborhood in particular. And thanks to Mayor and his leadership for the Clean Streets Task Force team. Could you talk a little bit about if there is some ways that residents can report in? What's the best way, if I have illegal dumping on my street, to report into um, sanitation and public works to have that addressed? Understanding we're, we're trying to prevent it at the source, but if it does happen, how can we best address it quickly? You can report it online through our website. I don't have the link. Matt can uh, step up in a second and go. He, he might have the link memorized, but you can report it. Uh, we're also working with Kathleen. I think it's Clean Streets. Uh, I'm not going to. Uh, yes, the URL to report it on our website is wpb.org forward slash clean streets. And the advantage of reporting it that way is they could upload images. And as soon as that's uh, submitted, it's going to issue a service request in our dashboard, in our work order system. Great. So if, you know, the commissioners on her walk or you know, any of the commissioners on bike rides, et cetera, throughout the city, we could just log on to that app and report it as we see it. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you. And to address litter, we're also looking at other uh, methods and means through our Clean Street Task Force. So like Armando mentioned, we have two citizens uh, on the task force, and they had some really great ideas. Any other... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. No, I, I just want to. I just want to point out, since we're you know we are speaking to the public, it's none of this can be done without the public's cooperation. You heard you heard the amount of staff that these folks have. It is very limited. Uh, they are stretched to the bone. So we really need. That's why the campaign is so important. Folks need to take responsibility and be part of the solution because otherwise, there's just no way, resource-wise, that we could respond to every single 
trash that's being thrown in the streets. We need the citizens to step up as well. Yeah, it adds new meaning to the term, see something, say something. Um, it's not just about uh, physical um, interaction, but yet yeah, anything affecting the quality of life. Mayor, can I mention one more thing? Absolutely. So it may not be a commission workshop. Uh, uh, we're working with engineering department on a solution to this. We identified some areas that are congested throughout the city and it's difficult for us to pick up trash especially yard and bulk waste. So we've had that, uh, we identified some areas, Flamingo, Flamingo Park and some other locations throughout the city. So we're working with Kevin and his team on how we're gonna address and fix those uh, concerns we have. So I don't, I'm not sure if it's gonna be a mayor commission workshop. I'm sure it probably will be at some point, but it's something that we're working on. Yes, and I appreciate that. I was in a meeting with, with staff and, and they are to look at the city as a whole so we could come up with citywide yes, sir. Uh, solutions and, and resolutions to address it. But thank okay. you. Uh, yes, Commissioner. Thank you. There's been a lot of talk about the clean streets and the public relations campaign against anti-littering. Will we have a presentation or more in-depth information on all of that effort going towards anti-littering? I could. One, one thing where we meet in a, in a couple of weeks, one of the things that we're looking at is becoming an affiliate of Keep America Beautiful. Um, Palm Beach County, there's a few municipalities down south and north of us that are affiliates. So let us get, gather some more information and I'll work with Armando on, on, on the presentation. Okay. And, you know, idea. it's not lost on me that it's, it takes a number of different strategies to solve this. We spoke recently, um, there was some overflowing trash cans at a business nearby that the wind was taking that trash actually across Dixie and into a neighborhood that they could see the address of the business that was streets away. And so that was one area by, you know, one way to fix that by getting them the trash cans that were the right size or, you know, helping them to understand not to overflow their trash cans. You know, but, but the other issue that you brought up is, is, is the public. And, you know, yesterday with Martin Luther King Day and all of the service activities that were going on, I drove down by Curry Park and that property that's vacant across the street. I know that many of us actually helped, I think all of us on the dais here, helped clean that up just about a month or two ago, and it was riddled with litter again. And, you know, I do see trash cans out there, and, and you know, I know that we're aware of that. Um, but, it, but it really is the public being aware as well. I remember when we were picking up trash there, a woman came out of the apartment complex there and said, thank you so much for doing this. She said, I actually saw one of my neighbors pull up in his car, throw something out the window, and then pull into the garage. And, and she, you know, was up in her, on her balcony and she was yelling at him, you know, stop doing that. And so if there's more that we can do to help encourage residents to, you know, um, be kind <laughs> to, to our earth and, and to each other, that's helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else on this item? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Josh and your thank team you. for a, a wonderful presentation. We appreciate it.